The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here on this Wednesday. Uh, the last day before Thanksgiving, and usually it's an up day. Traditionally, I'm thinking it's kind of a mixed day. That's what I thought. I thought yesterday was more kind of the day before Thanksgiving session, and today there'll be a little digestive phase. So let's go through all of this. We've got the Dow up 98 at 44,958. It tiptoed right into the 45,000 level, went to 45,003. That's really important. And since I've got this as leg B, we should be traversing the 45,000s next week. After that, I think we have a bit of a digestive phase, and we'll go through this slowly, one at a time. Let's go through the S&Ps trading right now. It hasn't taken out yesterday's high. <clears throat> uh, it's close. Yesterday's high was 6,000. Uh, 6, let me just give you the exact figure. 6,025.42. 6,025. Let me just change this. 25.42. Um, and I'm calling this a leg B. I, the notation you see here might be a little different because I changed it a few days ago, but I had to reconfigure everything uh, in TradeStation. I was getting a bug, and I went through it with someone, uh, Mario, last night. It was very kind. I went through the whole thing. I, I always have a, a minor heart attack. Um, because you never know if it doesn't come back and I lose all my notation. Everything's hand charted. It's not automated so that it comes back if something happens. It's gone. And I thought I'd lost a couple of uh, pieces of information and I just had to make sure it all came back again. And it did. So this is very interesting because the S&P, the MACD has gone positive. Not great, but it is possible. positive. The stochastic's at 85%. That's really good. On balance volumes in the daily chart is a little bit overbought. The 9 is still beautifully above the 14, and that's really good. So this should go. Next week, I'm anticipating a uh, peak C, and there may be a peak D, or maybe it's the following week. But we're getting close to where I'm anticipating. There's a little bit of a time, more a rotational timeout. And talking about a rotational timeout, look what's going on here in the queues. The QQQ, which is the NDX 100, top 100 stocks in the uh, NASDAQ. So this Invesco QQ Trust series trading right now at 506.25, down 3.07. I made a high in the 314. What was that exactly? It was 314.60, was it? 314. Let me drag that down a little bit. 514.66 level. That was an all-time high. Now, what's very interesting about this is that we've got a pattern. This is one of those patterns where people make a lot of noise. They say, oh, my God, it's, it's the wedge, it's the this, it's the that. And I always look at it and I say, you know, the weight of evidence here suggests that it's starting to tire on the right side and that it could roll over and make an H pattern. Um, and, yes, it could go. if it goes higher, then it becomes the rectangle that's making higher highs and higher lows right here like this. It's a much more important pattern than the, than the um, flag pattern uh, because that'll become, oh, look at that, A, gray A. This is the QQQ, gray A, gray B. And until the MACD goes positive and the stochastic, which is 62, goes positive, it, it'll be strange that it can go to a D underneath the previous high. Yep, it can do that. But that's more the pattern. So these, uh, I haven't changed the color. These are normally gray because I haven't got a confirmation that it's gone from a, even a buy signal to a buy mode. It's good action because it's close to the all-time highs. So all I can say is sideways consolidation for the QQQ, negative action in the um, SMHs going from uh, the 283.07 high of the 14th of July, all-time high. It makes the big, rec the large rectangle formation and then fails to go peak A, peak B, peak C with higher highs and higher lows. Instead, there's really great evidence now to say there's a peak C1, peak C2, and that suggests you don't have to go down to the low 
of, um, I think it was 200, 200.49, the low of the week of the 9th of August. But yeah, so I'm going to type in here a, a high underneath the previous high at a D. This happens to be C1 and then C, C2, which acts like a D. And just for those of you who use Chapman, I'm making today Technical Friday because we won't be here Friday, although the market's open half a day. Um, so I'm treating this as Technical Friday. So there's an arching over, and I said to subscribers, we will consider going into the SOXS, which is the three times, it's the only way we can really do it, three times short the S SMHs. I, I almost tiptoed in the other day when we had the little spike in the semiconductors into the 244 area. I didn't do that because I think if this is really going to take off to the downside, then um, it's a it's a process that says this Chapman Wave inside track propellant zone in the SMH, as you can see here in the day in the daily chart, technical Friday, except it's Wednesday, um, where we've got this narrow, there are narrow channel to the downside. At any point, if the SMHs take out 234 as support, and they're at 236.92, closes under 234, that says, uh-oh, be careful, you're going to arch over. And that will also confirm for me that we're really close, and that's what we do. We've been taking little bits off our beautiful lungs because I'm anticipating that we're getting really close to a kind of an overbought situation that just says, no, this is not the end of the world. This is not a 20% correction. I'm anticipating 8% at some point, maybe 10 or 12%. That could happen. I'm not saying it's going to because I, have to, I haven't got the proof yet. I have to wait a little longer because I have got the down the S&P in leg B. <laughs> um, I might be wrong. There could be an alternate count. It could be a G, but I think it's a B, and we should go to slightly higher, not much, but slightly higher highs over the next week and a half. Okay, with that said, now it's very important to go to the IWM, which probably is pulling back now. Yep, it's now only only up 91, 94 cents at uh, 241.51. So I've got this. This is unusual that we should have the one that was leading, which is the iShares Russell 2000 ETF, going to test at 244. <laughs> it's amazing. Oh, oh, I have to retype this because I, I lost that information when I had to go back to Thursdays. Uh, price movement. I think it was 289. I better get the exact price. So IWM today is Wednesday. So on Monday it hit 244.98. Wow, isn't that amazing? 244.98. All time high was exactly three years ago. November of 2021, it hit 244.46 and then plunged to a double bottom in the 161 area. Can you believe that? And now, in a much shorter time frame, it's come back to test. Uh, let me just move this over a little bit. But I did use a plumb line, and that plumb line said, oh, it's a break already, that if I use this candle right here, this candle right here, this, this, this doji candle of the of May of 2023, we could get an exact test of the 244.46 level in November. We've done that perfectly. Time match. I'll be back. Dow's up 57, 97. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets, with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Hi folks, let me just check something here as we come out of the break. Uh, yes, it's safe to do that. Okay, good. Very good. Uh, what we're looking at here in the IWM is that I've got this as a leg E, a peak E actually. I could give it an alternate count. I don't need to do that. This is my thinking. That the Dow and the S&P are going to squeak somehow or other into higher prices, new all-time highs. To get to that D, that, that missing D in the Chapman Wave methodology, the fourth highest peak, peak D, kind of that's your objective once you get a buy signal to a buy mode upgrade, and that's where we are. So I, I'm going to be wrong if there's a big slide in the next uh, couple of sessions going into maybe Tuesday of next week, but this is what I'm thinking. That the IWM is an E. <clears throat> if it goes to 244.99, a new all-time high by one penny, that becomes an F, and then it could pull back and even go to a G. When it gets to a G, yes, it could be a recycle, but the chances are that the S&P and the Dow will be going to their Ds. Uh, this is my thinking because I have a time lapse. The time lapse came to November for the I, uh, iShares Russell 2000 ETF um, using the plumb line that I chose. And so far, nothing's changed. It's gone to that level. It's in leg D. D is your objective. And that's a monthly chart. It's gone to an E in the uh, weekly, a very quick D to E. I usually, I get nervous when I see a D to E very quick like that. Yes, it could become an E, um, an instant restart. Wow. If that becomes an instant restart, it says the money that's coming out of certain sectors like the tech sector and certain parts of the tech sector, like the semis, that could be going into other areas. Now, do the do the fund managers go automatically from tech, high PE tech, into the low PE small caps? It takes time. Well, they've had time. They've had a long time because, look, the SMHs basically even – where did I type that? The SMHs, the semis. I remember Tech Friday. I'm going to be quite tactical today because this is, I'm, I'm thinking out loud. And some of it's even fresh thinking because as I think, it creates other ideas. So the SMHs made their high back in July at 283.07. So the fund managers have had a lot of time. It isn't like um, the, the, the grannies and grandpas um, 
of the year 2000 switching from bonds, the safety of bonds and the safety of preferred shares, straight into the dot-coms because the talk was so heavy. There isn't talk. Even if you go to AIQ, the AIQ, which is the um, this is the ETF for the uh, artificial intelligence, Global X Artificial Intelligence ETF, which is in leg D in the monthly chart, leg D in the weekly chart. I've got this as a B, but this is the one that I'm having the most trouble with. So this is, say, even in the AI area. What was the, those crazy stocks that we were looking at? Uh, I keep forgetting the, the names. QBT, QUBT, QUBT, is that it? Yeah, QUBT. Yeah, look at that, leg D in the weekly chart, uh, probably just a leg A in the monthly chart, and a G stash C in the uh, daily, and this is the quantum computing area. So you can see where I'm going. I'm saying that it takes a while to propagate ideas that become fulfilled, especially for fund managers when they've gone from one sector, that is the crazy sector, into the most, the dullest of all, so that takes time, and I think time is up. So now the thinking has to be, where do I put my money if there's a kind of volatility? And the technicals in the monthly chart of the IWM are stellar. They are nice. Look, 88% in the stochastic MACD is good. Nine over the 14 is great. And the on-balance volume isn't even close to being overbought. It is a tad overbought in the uh, weekly chart. And that's why I'm saying I'm watching this very closely. So where am I? The question came in. Where would so I? I question came in saying um, I, there's a rotation going on. I'm still very favorably inclined towards the uh, Russell 2000. And where should I add more? Okay, so that's more an intermediate term play. <clears throat> if that's the case... Then what I'm saying is I'd have two stages. And I, I'm going just for the moment, I'm going to exclude TNA because that's a trading position that we often put in. I almost did it on the last tranche that we put in the IWM for subscribers to the opening call since we got the, the, the low in August and we've had trades. And now we've got two good positions in IWM. One's a call, one's a trading position. I would do this. I'd have in my mind two separate areas, and you need patience. I'd stay with this position. I wouldn't – I'd have to reassess over the – going into Sunday night whether or not at this point you want to actually add a TNA position. I don't. Right now, I think we're getting kind of toppy. A shorter term, not the week, the monthly chart is still fabulous. The weekly chart is very good, but the very quick D to E instant restart, and this becomes an A – and then over the period going into late January, early February, we're actually in a brand new leg C or something. Uh, let's go one step at a time. Where would I start? I'd have a split position. We're at 241 right now. I'd start a position, and it depends on the market. I might say I'd say I'd 230, 235 to 233 is really my first entry into a starting, a, a bigger position, a, 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 call it the, the second real tranche for the next big move up in the IWM. If it becomes a leader, that's what I do. But we we have to keep in touch. I'm not going to just say arbitrarily, hey, 235.3. You know, no, I'm saying this is the area, 200, the 14 period exponential moving average at 235. I probably want to see it just dip under it. I don't think the green nine period moving average will turn to pink uh, at 233. It'll probably have to go to 228. And I'm, I got a feeling that for the next big tranche to be fully put in place, you might have to see that first, a pink nine period moving average in the daily chart. So a first part of it will be at about 235. But let's, let's do this together because um, you have to see what happens. What if what if we spike first to 247, 235 um, could turn into 237? I don't know. I'm just saying. But right now, that's that's what I'm looking at. Okay, I thought I'd do this as well, but I haven't finished everything else. So let's go one step at a time. I've done the IWM. Uh, I want now to go to the gold. So gold's having a nice move up. It's up 20. I think this is a reflex rally. I think gold is actually stuck in this lower range between 2760, but really important 2600 
is first key support if it takes that out and retests the low that was made uh, on the, uh, this is November the 14th at 25.65 in the continuous contract. Ha, you got to be careful because I think it starts to go into this area right here, uh, 25.24. <clears throat> and that changes the weekly chart completely. That becomes a dreaded H. Then I say, okay, ignore gold for a while. At this point, we still have our gold position, a new gold position. Um, it's doing okay. Uh, if it gets taken out, uh, we're, we're, I've lowered the stop so that the profit that we have it will dissipate and we'll take a little bit of a loss. I'm trying to give it a little bit of room. I don't want to go in and out, in and out uh, of gold uh, quickly. We've done it over the year. This year we've been in a couple of times and out, so I don't want to be messing around. All right, we'll come back. We'll look at GDX as we're going to the break. The GDX is not playing too well. It's up 39 at 37.58. I'll be back. Basel Chapter Dow's up 74. S&P's down 15. Mixed market. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tiger Technician's Hour is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
we'll get back to gold in a minute, but just I had this and I, I might run out of time. So the question came in about Zim integrated shipping, actually more statement that it was down sharply from the 30, uh, about 30 uh, high of November. Uh, and now it's down at 21.27. Yeah, that is a buy. Let me just have a look if I've still got DSX shipping notated. Oh my, ah, lost it all. Uh, DSX is Diane shipping. Wow, that looks bad. Um, what were the, I can't, now I can't remember the others because we haven't looked at them for so long. All those different shippers. Let's see, Nat uh, NAT, this is Nordic. Uh, I lost the note. Oh, no, there it is. Nordic American made a peak E top up, up in the fours, trading at 291. Just trying to find a little bit of a base. That's Nordic American. I think that's I think that's uh, or a shipper. Uh, I don't think it's dry bulk. Well, maybe it's dry bulk plus uh, oil. I'm not sure, but it's Nordic American. Uh, yeah. Okay. So Zim. Yeah. This is this is not good. Now I'm trying to find somewhere on my desk in the mess here because I'm trying to sort things out. You know, before Thanksgiving, family comes, trying to get everything in my little office. And of course, I chose the smallest room in the house uh, 30 years, what is it, more years ago, because I knew it would be a little, a little bit of a mess. I, I fill up the space that I'm given. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to find, I had this dry bulk shipper, and I'm just trying to remember, I'm always looking for a dry bulk. I don't have a dry bulk uh, uh, symbol, but this one was a dry bulk something or other. And I put the I put it in a little sticky. I have all these stickies, uh, post-its, and now I can't find it. And I'm trying to remember the name. What a pity. Anyway, that that's it was at a low, and it said, hmm, that's very interesting. All right. So that's just what I'm saying is that the integrated shipping Zim Z I M is a symbol. Uh, 2129. It's had a really sharp pullback. Not yet an Eiffel Tower straight up, straight down pattern. More like a pyramid. And if it takes out 20 support, then the 18. 0.95, 200 period exponential moving average support comes in. GDX. So the GDX, as I said, it's it's just sideways. It's not going anywhere. It hit the 200 period moving average, tested it about four or five times, and then popped up and now it's at 37.50. But it is a peak D, sell signal in the weekly chart. If GDX drops under 35.80, to test the low that was made on the 14th of 35.19, that's going to go pink. The nine period moving average will go pink, and that'll say the GDX is in a sell signal, and I have to wait for the whole week for the, for the, on the close on Friday, whatever day it goes to that level, if it does, and say it's going to be upgraded to a sell mode. It's not there yet. I'm just saying the weekly chart is in a sell signal. The daily is in a sell mode for the market vectors. Gold miners, ETF, and you remember peak D is what we look for, but it made a peak D in the weekly. It made a peak D. Nope, I've got to wait for the whole month to finish uh, of December, but so far, the high that was made at 44, is it 23 or something? 4422. 4422 um, in October, early October, that is going to be a peak D in the monthly chart as well. If you look at silver, this LV, I wonder if I got this one still notated. Yes, this one has an alternate count. It could be GCC in the weekly chart, but it's an E in the monthly chart. And this is really important because uh, silver has gone from a high, most recent high back in October, late October, I think that was the 20, yeah, 22nd, where it hit 31. 31.80, I should type that in, 31.80, and now what we're looking at is it is in a sell mode in the in the daily chart. It's in a sell signal, very close to sell mode in the weekly chart. So the iShares Silver Trust in that pattern that we call the uh, Chapman Wave breakout pattern, cup and ladle breakout pattern, uh, usually goes to a D or even an E and then comes back and test the lip at 27.98. That's and it's at 27.45 right now. So I I'm looking at this and I'm thinking that's a problem. So let's do this. Um, uh, we've got BTC, which is up um, 4,580. Bitcoin made a peak E the other day, just over a hundred thousand, hundred thousand. Uh, 170, I believe, was the high in the continuous contract of the Bitcoin. Here's your cup and ladle pattern. Most importantly, I'm looking at uh, 
the nine period moving average strongly over the 14 at this particular point. But I'm going to be watching this very closely because it's a work in progress. I have different notation for the different one, the GBTC, which is the one, this is the Bitcoin Investment Trust, did go to a D and maybe a peak D this week, we'll see. Um, and a leg D in the monthly chart in that cup and ladle breakout pattern and a peak E in the uh, daily. So the Bitcoin is saying, mm, 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 I'm doing well. But I've got to be watched because at any point, if there is a pullback, let's go to the GBTC, which is the Bitcoin Investment Trust. If there is a close under 68, it's at 75, 75. Anytime in the next, giving it a full two weeks, it says, finally, after such a spectacular move, you're getting some kind of a digestive action, but you haven't got it yet. If there's a break to 79, 19, let's call it 80. If the Bitcoin Investment Trust, Bitcoin Investment Trust, it's a, it's a trust. Um, and, and it doesn't trade overnight, but it, I, I've seen it once or twice in the after hours, you'll see a price movement. But actually, you just treat it as if it's a daily, uh, a daily vehicle. Um, this is, this leg D is really important. And um, I'm just watching it very closely to see if it's getting tied because technically, all the technicals are good in the daily and weekly. The, sorry, in the weekly and monthly, the daily technicals are getting a little overbought. So where would support be? Um, I'd say between 70 and 68. That's going to be key support if there is a pullback. So as I said before, today is the day before Thanksgiving. Jake Bernstein did a great webinar just uh, last week, I think it was, talking about the day before Thanksgiving. The history of that is that it's invariably up. And I said to myself, no, I think yesterday was the day and that today might be up. But I think that we actually closed kind of weakish. That's just what I'm looking at. I might be wrong, but that's kind of my impression based on my technical analysis. And we'll see where, and we'll go from there. So in the meantime, back at the ranch, let me just have a look at the E-mini. Don, I had a short and then I covered it. And now we are. Oh, oh, let's move, let's move. Look at this. Big C1, C2 in the 10 minute. Oh, that was silly. I didn't believe in my own work because I was going to do the show and I didn't want to be looking at different. Oh, look at this. Down 24 in the E mini. Uh, um, all right. Well, that's just the way it goes. Look at that move down. Um, yeah. What can I say? I didn't expect it to be quite as bad as that. With the SP way weaker than the Dow, the Dow's still up 33. All right. Here comes a break. I, I, there were three things I want to look at here. Uh, Basel ARQQ, thoughts, recent price movement, ARQQ, Tiger YouTube. Uh, let's go to ARQQ. Is that had a big move? ARQQ, am I correcting? Yep, there it is. Yeah, it had a big move. I'll be back. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. 
and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So if I say to you, um, I, I'm going to recommend a stock is trading at uh, 1,000 and 1,000, there we go, uh, 1,038. 0 0.00, a lot of round numbers. They're the lowest 200, <clears throat> only in one month. This is the month of September of 2021, which pulled back very sharply to the 300s, but then went right back to just a tad under the previous side, went to 1,036.39. And then it slipped a little bit and was at 600, and I said to you, wow, there was a stock that was up at 1,000. Would you be interested? And you say, oh, really? Um, I'll think about it. So you took about a, just a couple of weeks and you asked the person, you said, okay, where, where's the trading right now? And the person said, oh, oh, <clears throat> it's got a little doji candle in February of 2022 and it's uh, at about 4.35, 3.48. He said, wow. And then you just wait a little while and you wait around and say, okay, so where is it now, May of 2023? Oh, oh. $17.50, and then you waited just a little longer, and you said, okay, where is it now? Um, October of 2020, is it still a good buy? And you say, well, uh, where, where is it? It's trading at $4.31. Oh, it did have a round number six, all time, a, a recovery high, and but it's trading at 431 I mean, and then it double bottoms. It goes to a beautiful double bottom at 375. And you say, is this the time to buy it? And you say, well, it was over a thousand and now it's at three. I might nibble. Well, you nibble, right? And the next thing you know, two weeks later, you say, where's the price? You say, oh, $9.76. Uh, so that's fantastic. I'm going to add to it. You add to it and, the, and you say, where's it now? It's at $5.31. Next month, in uh, next week, um, oh, this is November the 8th of 2024, you say, where is it? And you say, $5.22. So you say, I, I, I'm done. I, I can't do this. I'm, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. And then you don't see the person for about two, three weeks. And you say, uh, where's the, where's the, where's the pr trading right now? And you say, oh, the other day, uh, three days ago, it hit $14.98. So that's a little, <laughs> the double top for this would be for the high that was made back in March of this year at um, $23, right, round number. And so uh, here's the story of Arcit Quantum Inc. So Arcit Quantum Inc., uh, I, I would just say this is, um, hmm, that's, a little, that's, a, that's a little tough, right? So. Q-U-B-T, Q-U-B-T. 
QUBT is quantum computing, uh, tootling along just in uh, November, the beginning of November, in the ones. And three days ago, it hit nine point something, 9.20. Then it comes down the next day to six. Well, nine to six, I would call that about a, a 30% decline. Um, and now you're looking at today's high of 770. It's trading at 6.99. So let's go back to ARQ, AR, AR. You think I'm going to remember the symbol, QQ? Yeah. Um, and so the question is, I can't remember the question. The question is, let's get out of this. Uh, that was on ARQQ, thoughts on recent price and volume action. So I, you know, I like to do, I've got the volume right here, but I like to use it as on balance volume. On balance volume says it's a little bit overbought, but I, in this particular instance, this is, it's only a partial part of the technical analysis because it's just been so volatile. So the, what would I look at? I look at a peak E in the Chapman Wave methodology. I look at a Chapman Wave Roman candle, three green inverted Roman candle three days ago, two days ago, another one. And today it went halfway into the wick, but it hasn't been able to hold 60 minutes above 19.04. So this is what I'm going to tell you. Just on a purely technical basis, based on Chapman Wave methodology, if ARQQ is able to hold any time between uh, from now, um, it hasn't done it yet. From the moment it can, if it if it's able to, if we can go to nine, uh, let's even give it nineteen, go to nineteen and hold above nine. It's got it can't keep dipping down into the eighteens. If it can hold above nineteen for about sixty minutes, then I would say by Friday there will be a half day of trading. Or Monday, it could very well have a quick test of the high that was made a couple of days ago, 2.91, 20.91. This leg B, I've seen this so many times in this stock when I was looking, glancing through this one and the was it QBT, QUBT, um, it was saying the same thing. So that's the upside. But the way I'm looking at it, there's an overbought situation that is unfolding with the the aperture between the nine period differential in the MACD and the red slow 26 period exponential moving average that says there should be a congealing, there should be some kind of a diminution between the histogram, that's the vertical lines, the, the, the vertical line that assesses the distance between the upper line and the lower line. And that just says to me, got to be careful, is at a peak E, if at any point even intraday, I don't care, intraday, uh, today or, or Friday or Monday, if this thing has a 30-minute break below 16.75, eh, 16.70, it's trading at 17.50 right now, there's a good chance that it's got an intermediate term daily. This is not the monthly chart, just, um, I shouldn't even call it intermediate term. I say a, a near, near to short term, Di um, I can't call it a digestive phase because it could be a huge percentage. I mean, just even going from 1770 down to 15, that's two points. That's, I mean, you're already, you're already in the 12, 13% area. So I would just say, be careful because you could not, you might not then see the high that was made of 20.93 on the 25th. You might not see that again for about a three to, no, I'm saying five to eight, nine days. That's how it could be a rectangle. In fact, I'll draw this in right now, and we'll look at it again next week. It could turn out to be this rectangle. Even now, I'm looking at it, and I'm saying, I would not be surprised if this rectangle is the containment area for a little while. In other words, going to early next week. I hope that helps you. I'm completely wrong. If there's another huge burst of energy, and it does hold above, what did I say it was? 17.90? Uh, what did I say? Uh, no, 18. It has to be halfway into the wick. 18.90, yes. 18.90. If it can hold above 18.90 for 60 minutes today, 
uh, or Friday, there's a good chance it's going to pop higher. But I, I think we're looking at a ARQQ, Arquit, Quantum Inc. I think it's getting choppy to the extent that the upside now might be limited and you might, might be seeing more lower highs and low lows just for the interim period until it catches its breath. Dow's up 42, S&P's up 20, down 20. Oh, wow. I'll be back. That's what Japan Tiger Conditions out. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. 152.89. So I, I was asked about this. I was going to do a special thing for my subscribers when I did my overview. I'm not sure yet whether I will do it uh, tonight. Uh or if I'll have a chance with family coming over on the weekend, I'd like to get it done earlier uh, rather than like Saturday or Sunday. So NVIDIA did a high of 152.89 on the 21st. 152.89, let me just type that in, 0.89. Okay, I, this is what I'm thinking. You know, I always talk about leapfrogging. There used to be a stock called leapfrog. I don't know if it's still there. What, what I'm thinking is this, that there are things coming along, especially with the government slapping in billions of dollars into the semiconductor area. When, when has the, the, the government ever got really good timing for something um, if they don't do it at a high at the wrong time? 
So my thinking here is that there's something's going to come along and the whole battery, the semiconductor, the whole that whole area over this coming year, 2025, that has the characteristic of a leapfrog. In other words, it's a technology that just does something so different from everything else that it, within a, the, a nanosecond, which is really what you talk about when you talk about semiconductors, I don't know if they probably got much, much uh, smaller time frames, but within a nanosecond, everything is obsolete. It doesn't mean that the next day everything has to change. It means that there's a, now a cultural thinking that says, oh, oh, this is the new way we've got to do th- and that's what and that's what I'm thinking in video is about to come up is about to have oh my is that the end of the show that's the end of the show I'm gonna say have a wonderful Thanksgiving everybody um uh yes we won't be here Friday see you on Monday and uh good grief what happened to the time yeah just have a wonderful Thanksgiving and uh, we'll go from there over the weekend we'll see you on Monday <laughs> 